Hi there, it's Nicole Spore here today with some metallic watercolored holiday background cards to share with you. These are clean and simple yet elegant cards that are really quite quick to make. I'm using lots of new products from the latest Simon Says Stamp Cheer and Joy release. We're going to be using the outline Christmas bulbs and candy cane backgrounds as well as the joyful frame die and a sentiment from the holiday greetings mix. We're going to start by stamping our outline Christmas bulbs background on some palm Hero Hughes cardstock. I went with traditional colors of cardstock but any color will work with this particular technique. I'm going to stamp the holiday or the outline bulbs, pardon me, on the background with some Simon Says Stamp clear embossing ink and heat emboss with gold embossing powder. This is the antique gold embossing powder from Simon Says Stamp and it's one of my very favorites. I'm going to prep the background with a powder tool first to help keep the embossing powder only on the stamped outline. I inked up the image twice and stamped it twice just to make sure I had a really, really good impression. The background measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches, meaning it's going to completely cover the front of an A2 sized card base. Next, I'm sprinkling on the antique gold embossing powder and then I will heat set the outline. Because this is a background stamp, it does take a little bit of time and you really want to make sure that you have embossed and melted all that embossing powder. I went over it and went over it again just to make sure. The powder also makes it maybe a little bit hard to make sure you've got everything. Once I have it embossed and the embossing powder has dried, I'm going to take a dry rag and just buff away all of that extra powder and then I'll set it aside while I stamp my other background, which is the candy cane background stamped on Hero Hue's cranberry ink, or cranberry cardstock, pardon me. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did for the Christmas bulbs and stamp that candy cane background two times with clear embossing ink, sprinkle on the antique gold embossing powder, and then heat set the candy canes. The only difference between the two, besides the different patterns, are the different colors of cardstock used. Once we have melded the embossing powder, we will again buff away the powder tool residue that's left over, and then we are ready to start painting our backgrounds. One of my very favorite techniques is using these beautiful starry colors, watercolors, to paint metallic on any kind of image. I love this on dark cardstock especially. The less amount of water that you use, the darker or more opaque that the watercolor effect will be. I'm using the white here to color in some of the stripes on the candy canes that have the skinny stripes and the candy canes that have the wider stripes, I will do every other leaving the rest of the candy cane that great cranberry color. Instead of coloring in all the candy cane on this particular background, we're instead going to color in the background areas left behind with a contrasting color of one of these Starry Colors gold metallic paints. You can see as the color starts to dry, how the candy canes are just coming to life. This is a great way to create an elegant background for a card. I'm using a water brush pen, which does have water in it, but I'm careful not to squeeze out too much water when I am painting on my cardstock. Instead, I squeeze out a little water into the pan, mix it up really good, and then pick up that color and paint it onto my cardstock. This is going to give you the more opaque results. In between each color change, I want to make sure and clean my water brush pen really well. I know it's kind of hard to see on camera, but it does have a fantastic metallic sheen. It will dry a little bit lighter than what you see here, leaving behind this great shimmery effect 
perfect for holidays. We'll color in a few additional areas here. I'm trying to work candy cane by candy cane to not miss any areas, but there's always seems to be at least something that gets left behind that I'll catch a little bit later when I go in to color in the background. The same is gonna be true for our outline Christmas bulbs background. This one's even more detailed, I think, just because it has a few smaller areas with the highlights on the bulbs and then the bulb toppers. I'm going to go ahead and let, set my background aside to completely air dry before I color in the background. That's just going to help the colors not bleed into each other. The embossed outline will help hold that color in place. But just to be safe, I always like to kind of let something dry before I go back and color next to it. I painted in the bulbs with a few additional colors than I used for the candy canes. Three different shades of the metallic golds, including the metallic white and the red gold, were used. I'm going to do the tops of the bulbs in even a different color. So total four of the different colors were used for this particular design. For the bulbs, I'm going to leave the background green and color in all of the bulbs. I'm also not going to paint in the highlight on each of them. I'll go back in with a white pen later on and add that highlight area. I tried to do all of the bulb toppers at once, but I did miss one. I didn't notice it until I was almost done putting the cards completely together, but you can see it there. It's that first bulb that I colored white, and I missed coloring it in, so I will go back and catch that after a bit. I like to hold on to my cardstock with a finger, usually, in an area that hasn't been painted. However, I could also maybe tape this in place to hold it down. Adding in all of this color is really making these bulbs come to life. I will tell you that I didn't do it on camera, but some of the bulbs I felt like didn't have as good of coverage as I would like, especially the ones colored in with the more champagne gold metallic color. Once they were completely dry, I painted over them giving them a second coat I even did that to some of the white gold as well. That just gave it a little bit more coverage that I liked a little bit better. But always let it dry all the way first or hit it with a heat tool to speed up the drying time so that you like the results better. I'm going to continue painting the bulbs until I've completely covered the entire front of this card. Then I'm going to let this background sit and completely dry and switch back to the candy cane background and add the color to the background of this one. I'm going with gold as a really bright contrast to the red and white candy canes. For the red background, we're just going to take that gold color and color in any of the areas that are around the candy canes to give the candy canes the focal point. This was actually a lot less coloring than trying to color in all the little sections of the candy cane. This technique would also be fun to do on white cardstock and use other kinds of watercolors, colorful watercolors, to color in your images. You could even do this by stamping the backgrounds on Bristol Smooth cardstock and use Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers to color in your images for a different kind of watercolored effect and look. There's many ways to use these backgrounds. These are just a couple of my favorite if you want to do a watercolor type effect. Once the backgrounds are completely colored, I'm going to go ahead and set them both aside to completely air dry. If you're, t if you're pressed for time, you can always hit them with a heat tool to speed up that drying time. While the backgrounds are drying, I'm going to die cut the rest of the components for my card, including the Joyful Frame, which I'm going to die cut from three shades of cardstock. For the green or Christmas bulbs card, 
I've got the white rect or white square, pardon me. Then I have a green, which this is that Hero Hughes Palm cardstock that I die cut the joyful from that we're going to mat on our white square. And I purposely left the letters inside so that I can just add my gold die cut letters on top. Then I'm going to trace around the green square with the quickie glue pin and add my gold frame around this square and then draw over the letters with my quickie glue pin and add those letters on top. This gives you a three color sentiment and really makes this sentiment square stand out. This is a fun addition for all kinds of different cards. I'm going to use the same die for both of my background cards, just switching up the colors I used. So I'm going to use white and gold for my red candy cane card, but that time I'm going to die cut my red joyful square from that Hero Hughes Cranberry cardstock to match the card background. By adhering the letters on top, it's just going to give them a little more dimension. You could also pop the green letters out and inlay the gold letters if you prefer the inlay look. Once I have my letters in place, I can glue this square directly to my card background. I'm going to be adhering this in the upper half of the card. Trying, I just eyeballed it, I didn't measure it, but trying to leave equal space on the left and the right and up above the square. You can also save that gold die cut piece to use on another card or another project. I placed some acrylic blocks on top to hold this down while the glue completely dries. The quickie glue is awesome for teeny tiny little die cuts like these letters and the thin gold frame. The sentiment for my card was stamped using the Happy Holidays Wishes Greeting from the Holiday Greetings Mix 1 stamp set. I'm going to be stamping that same sentiment on palm or cranberry cardstock using clear embossing ink, heat embossing with the antique gold embossing powder, and then we'll adhere it to our card backgrounds here in just a second with foam adhesive. Earlier in the video, I said I left the highlights on the Christmas bulbs without color. Now I'm going to go in with a white pen and just draw in that color now that my background has dried. This is going to give a white, opaque highlight that's different from the metallic watercolor that I used so it'll stand out against the background. I like it much better than leaving them green. This is the Signo pen, the Uniball Roller, and it's fantastic for adding some white highlights to any kind of project. I'm placing that foam adhesive on the back of my Happy Holiday Wishes greeting and then I'm gluing my sentiment and adhering my dimensional strip to my card design. I really felt like my card needed just a tiny bit of dimension somewhere or embellishment, not dimension, um, embellishment. But I didn't want to go over the top because I still want my candy canes and light bulbs to be the focal point of the design. I'm going to be adding a clay snowflake from Honeybee Stamps to the center of the O in the word joyful as the only accent on the card. I love these because they're small, but it adds a nice little touch to each of the card backgrounds or card sentiments. I'm also going to glue both of my backgrounds to white top fold card bases. The card is beautiful as is here. But that little tiny snowflake adds such a fun, whimsical touch. I just added a dab of glue to the center and used the crystal katana to pick up the clay snowflake and place it in the center. You could also add gemstones or sequins or other small embellishments like hearts or stars. The candy cane background was completed exactly like the Christmas bowl background, just different colors. We're even going to add that clay snowflake to the center of the O in the word joyful here as well. 
I hope this has given you some ideas on how to use some metallic watercoloring for your holiday card backgrounds. Thank you so much for joining me today for these two cards featuring new stamps and dies from the Simon Says Stamp Cheer and Joy release. The supplies I used to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more cards featuring Simon Says Stamps, Dies, and Stencils that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel to never miss a new card making video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.